It was October 18th, 1924. In a best of nine series, the Kansas City Monarchs and the Hilldale Daisies were tied at three games apiece. Welcome to Philadelphia Baseball History. Don't forget to check out our merchandise. T-shirts, phone cases, masks, notebooks, mugs, and much more. Just go to tpublic.com and look for Philadelphia baseball history. It was a critical moment in the first ever Negro League World Series. The winners of the Eastern Colored League, Hilldale, had squandered a three games to one lead, allowing Kansas City to tie the series up. Hilldale's manager, Frank Warfield, faced a serious challenge. He wanted to have his best hitters in the lineup. Jake Stevens, Hilldale's shortstop, had hit below the Mendoza line for the regular season, and he had suffered a broken ankle late in the season. Warfield decided to place Hilldale's regular third baseman, future Hall of Famer Judy Johnson, at shortstop. Johnson had averaged 342 over the season with four home runs and 42 RBIs. Biz Mackey, who actually had played most of his games in the 1924 season at shortstop, was to play third base. And behind the plate would be the aging Louis Santop. Mackey was an interesting choice for shortstop. He had played shortstop and first base during the regular season. He also spent some time behind the plate. And coming up in the semi-pro leagues of his home state of Texas, Mackey had mostly played as a catcher who pitched occasionally. Mackey's average on the season was 333, far better than Stevens. But Stevens was known as the team's better defensive shortstop. At any rate, for a critical game, a number of Hilldale players were out of their normal defensive positions. It was the bottom of the ninth inning, and Hilldale was up two to nothing. The Monarchs bullet Rogan reached first base on an infield single to the left side of the field. Mackey had been playing third base deep. Doby Moore then singled off of Judy Johnson's glove. Two players out of position, two seemingly bad defensive plays. But with one run in, two outs, and the bases loaded, Frank Duncan came to the plate. Duncan hit a pop foul, which should have been the last out of the game. But Lewis Santop dropped the ball, and now heading back to the plate with new life, Duncan hit a single through the legs of Biz Mackey at third, scoring the tying and winning runs. Hilldale was now down four games to three. After the game, Warfield lit into Santop for the drop ball. It was a moment that unfortunately, Santop never lived down. Although Santop played a flawless defensive game the next day and even got two hits and a 5-2 victory for the Daisies that again tied the series, the defensive miscue in the 1924 Negro World Series signaled the changing of the guard for Hilldale. Hilldale would eventually lose the 1924 World Series to Kansas City five games to four with one tie. Biz Mackey became the team's regular catcher, with the aging Santop regulated to the role of backup. Mackey would go on to earn the reputation as the Negro League's best defensive catcher. John Raleigh Mackey was born in Texas on July 27, 1897. Exactly where is not entirely clear, as he had no birth certificate but he grew up in a farming family. He began playing semi-professional baseball in Texas at age 16. The city of Lulling claimed to be his hometown, and he did play both catcher and pitcher for the Lulling Oilers. But while it was known that he played in the Texas Colored League through the 1919 season, exactly where is somewhat of a mystery. You see, record keeping was not exactly a priority in African-American baseball, and how newspapers who reported on the games referred to Mackey, well, it varied. At times, the newspapers would call him Mackey. 
Other times they would call him Riley, or they would call him Wally, or they would call him Raleigh. We believe that he played catcher for the Dallas Black Giants in 1918. We also believe that he began the 1919 season playing for the Waco Black Navigators. But he and five other members of the Black Navigators jumped ship in June of 1919 and began playing for the San Antonio Black Aces. With Mackey on the mound for the end of the deciding game, San Antonio eventually defeated Dallas to take the league's 1919 championship. In 1920, Mackey again started the season as a pitcher for San Antonio, but by July, Mackey joined the Indianapolis ABCs in the new Negro National League. Now, whether San Antonio sold Mackey's contract, or whether Mackey simply broke the contract in order to play for more money, is also a matter of some disagreement among Negro League historians. At any rate, Mackey showed that he could hit and that he could play catcher. He earned a contract to return to Indianapolis in 1921, although he played winter ball in Texas. The Negro National League season was shorter than the major leagues, so in the long off season, Negro League players routinely joined another team, sometimes in a completely different league, often in places like Texas or even Cuba sometimes to engage in barnstorming, and other times to engage in exhibition games over the winter. After the 1921 season, for example, Indianapolis stayed together and earned extra money barnstorming, or going from town to town, playing the local teams. Mackey was even known to do West Coast trips through California, and also to take trips to play ball in Hawaii and Japan. After the 1926 season, for example, Mackey joined a team called the Philadelphia Royal Giants and engaged in a barnstorming tour of California. In 1923, Ed Bolton, the owner of the Hilldale Daisies, who had played in Derby, Pennsylvania, removed his team from the Negro National League. He helped to form a brand new league called the Eastern Colored League. Bolden angered Negro League founder Rube Foster by raiding the Negro National League to staff his team with more talented players. One of the players that Bolden enticed to join Hildale in the Eastern Colored League was Mackey. In fact, it was during his time with Hildale that Mackey earned his nickname, Biz. As a catcher, Mackey was known to be rather chatty. He would constantly talk to opposing hitters in an effort to distract them from concentrating on the pitcher. He was so good at making a hitter lose focus by giving them the business that Mackey became known as Biz. It was a nickname that was picked up by the Philadelphia Inquirer and the Pittsburgh Courier before the end of the 1923 season. Eventually, Rube Foster realized that more money could be made by having the pennant winners of the Negro National League play the winners of the Eastern Colored League in a Negro League World Series. So the two leagues made peace and began playing for the Negro League's championship beginning in 1924. That season, Mackey played mostly at shortstop and first base, but by 1925, Biz Mackey was the regular catcher for Hilldale. He hit 348 that season, with 54 RBIs in just 62 games. In a rematch between Hilldale and Kansas City, Mackey helped the Daisies win the second Negro League Championship for the Daisies. Mackey continued to split his time between Hilldale during the regular season and then touring Japan. His ability to throw from the crowd's position behind home plate amazed Japanese fans and made him a crowd favorite. Hildell left the Eastern Colored League in 1928. Mackey joined the Baltimore Black Sox squad for the rest of that season. He returned to Hildale in 1929 when the team helped to form the American Negro League. From 1931 to 1933, Mackey concentrated on playing in California, Hawaii, Japan, China, and the Philippines. 
In 1933, he joined the newly formed Philadelphia Stars and was part of their 1934 championship team. Mackey was a contemporary of Josh Gibson and selected as the starting catcher in the inaugural East-West All-Star Game. Mackey was recognized as the superior defensive catcher to Gibson, although Gibson's power is well known. After being traded from the Philadelphia Stars in 1936, Mackey began his career as a player manager. He was most famous for managing a young catcher by the name of Roy Campanella. Campanella called Mackey the master of defense of all catchers. Although Campanella had success with the Dodgers, he was paralyzed in a 1958 traffic accident. At a 1959 tribute game for Campanella's benefit, Campanella made a point of calling Mackey out to the field to recognize his contribution to Campanella's career. After baseball, Mackey lived quietly in Los Angeles, working as a forklift operator for a chemical company. Biz Mackey was selected for the Hall of Fame in 2006. If you would like to learn more about the Hilldale Daisies, click here. Don't forget to give us a like and tell us in the comments about your favorite Negro League players. In the description box, you can learn how to support this channel and find a link to our merch store. Please subscribe so you don't miss a video that we publish. Tell your friends about us and thank you so much for watching.